Hey everyone, it's Kristen from Kbecca, and in this Silhouette Print and Cut tutorial, we'll be making cut lines for different types of images using the Silhouette Studio software. If you're following along with the video series, you can use the file that we set up for print and cut in the first video to work with the images in this video. I've just opened a blank document and turned the registration marks on at the default settings. And then I copied the images that we'll be working with into this file. Often when you're working with clip art and images that you want to print and cut, they won't have coordinating cut lines for print and cut. It'll just be the image. Thankfully, Silhouette Studio offers some great options for creating borders and cut lines around lots of different types of images, so you have a lot of flexibility for printing and cutting. If you watched my earlier video about raster and vector graphics, you'll know that one of the areas where raster graphics excel is in their ability to render small details, textures, and gradients. The vase of flowers graphic here is a high resolution PNG image with a transparent background, and it's a great example of the power of raster images. You can see the textured shading and all the little details and how much they add to the image. Now we want to create a cut line border around the image so we can use it as a paper embellishment for a project. First, I'll zoom in a little bit here so you can see things better. And then I'll go over to the menu on the far right and open the trace panel, which is the fifth icon from the top. With the trace panel open, I'll click the select trace area button, and then I'll go over to the artboard, click on an area to the top left of the image, and drag the trace window down and to the right until it covers the entire image. When I let go of my mouse, you'll see the areas that are set to trace highlighted in yellow, and in this case there is actually not much yellow. We want the yellow highlights to cover the entire image instead of just little details within the image, so we'll need to make some adjustments. With the trace panel still open, I'll bump the slider for threshold up to 100%, and when I do that you'll see that the yellow now covers the entire image. Threshold values can vary from image to image, and sometimes you won't need to bump it up the whole way to 100% to get the trace results that you're going for. So just slide it up to a value that you're happy with for the image that you want to trace. There's still a couple of very small areas that aren't filled with yellow in the image, but that's not a big deal at all in this example. We have a few options for tracing in the trace style area on the trace panel. The regular trace will trace around the outer edge of the image, and it will also trace around any internal areas of the image where there is no yellow. That will give us too many little bits that we'll need to deal with later, so the better choice for this is Trace Outer Edge, which will just trace around the outer edges of the graphic. I'll click the Trace Outer Edge button to complete the trace, and then I'll drag the image off of the trace area so you can better see the result. Technically, we could use this as our cut line border, but you can see that it's a pretty complex shape with several detached areas, and if we print and cut the image with this cut line, we'd be dealing with a number of different pieces that would be difficult to work with. So for an image like this, having the cut line right up against the border of the image isn't ideal. To get where we want to be for the cut line border, we want to use Silhouette Studio's offset feature. So I'll go over to the far right menu and click the little star icon that has an offset star shape around it to open the offset panel. Then I'll click the offset button to create the offset. You can see that the offset shape is much less complex than our original traced border, so this will work much better for print and cut. We also have some options with the offset. The default corner style is rounded, but there's also a squared corner style, and you can see what happens when I click the squared corner style button. The shape that this gives to the offset shape is almost always too blocky looking for me, but there might be certain images or shapes that this will work well for. I definitely prefer the rounded corners for this image, so I'll click to change the style back. The other option that we have is to adjust the offset distance. The default is 0.125 inches, and if we adjust the slider to a lower number, the offset will come in closer to the image. If we adjust it to a higher number, the offset will move further out from the image. What you choose for this option is really a personal preference. For some images, you might want a smaller offset, and for others, a larger offset. I'm just going to leave it at the default value for this image. Now that the offset is the size that we want it, we can delete the original image trace because we won't be needing it anymore. I'll drag the trace shape out of the offset area so you can see that it's a separate element, and then I'll just click backspace on my keyboard to delete it. Next, we just have a little bit of cleanup work to do before we have our final cut line border for the image. 
You can see that even after creating the offset, there are a couple of small areas within it that are set to cut. We'll need to get rid of those so we have a nice clean border cut line. Now, you might not always want to get rid of interior areas that appear in the offset, and in those cases, you'd leave them as they are and move on to the next step. But because the interior areas in the offset here are so small, it doesn't really make sense to keep them. In order to delete those inner cut lines, we'll go over to the far right menu and click to open the Modify panel, which is the button with the little overlapping rectangle and circle icon. With the offset shape selected on the artboard, we'll go into the Modify panel under the Compound Paths and click the Release button. After this, you'll see two little squares appear around the little small cut line areas that we want to delete. These are now their own separate elements, so we can click to select them and then press Backspace on the keyboard to delete them. Now our border cut line is ready to go, and we'll bring the original image back over to the artboard, then click and drag to select both the border cut line and the image, and open the transform panel from the far right menu and click the center button in the horizontal align area to align everything horizontally. Next, we'll click the center button in the vertical align area to align everything vertically. Finally, we'll click Ctrl or Command plus G to group the cut line and image together so we can move them around as one element. Now this image is ready to print and cut. The next image that we'll be working with is an SVG, which is a vector file. We can resize this up or down as much as we want without losing image quality. And Silhouette Studio already knows where the borders of this image are, so we won't need to trace this image like we had to do with the first image, which was a raster file. I don't want to cut the interior areas on this image like I would if I were using it as a regular cut file, and I want to have a border around the image too, so we'll need to create an offset border for the cut line. First, I'll go over to the far right menu and open the offset panel. And then I'll click the offset button to create the offset border. I want the border to be a little bit smaller on this image, so I'll adjust the offset distance to 0.1 inch in the input area. And then I'll click the apply button to apply the changes. I'll just drag the offset area off of the main image so you can see that it's a nice clean shape. We won't have to do any additional cleanup work for this. I'll click Ctrl or Command plus Z to undo the dragging move and put the border cut line right back where it was. And then I'll click and drag it to select both the border cut line and the image and click Ctrl or Command plus G to group them into one element. So let's say that we want to have the cut lines for this image cut right around the edge of the heart without a white border. I've made a copy of the original heart SVG file here. And here's how you'd set up cut lines right at the edge of the image. With the offset panel still open and the image selected on the artboard, click the offset button to create the offset. Since we want the cut lines to be right around the edge of the image, we'll adjust the offset distance down to zero and click the apply button. I'll click and drag the image off of the offset area so you can see that the offset shape includes all of the outlines for the letters that are inside of the heart. We don't want to cut those areas when we print and cut, so we'll need to get rid of them. We'll do this in the same way that we deleted the small areas that we didn't want to cut from the floral image earlier. First, click to select the offset shape, then go over to the right menu and click to open the modify panel. After that, click the release button to release the compound pads. Once we do that, the interior letter cut lines will be separate elements, so we can drag the heart border out of the way, click and drag to select all of those letter cut lines, and press backspace to delete them. Now we're left with just the heart outline as the border cut line, which is what we want. Click and drag to select both the heart image and the cut line, and open the transform panel to align horizontally, then vertically, and press Ctrl or Command plus G to group the two elements together. Now we have a print and cut shape with the cut lines right around the edge of the image. The final image that we're working with is also a raster file like the flower image. This is also a high resolution PNG file with a transparent background. So you can see that raster files can also be more simple with solid colors. They don't necessarily always have to have lots of texture and detail. To create border cut lines for this image, we'll follow the same process that we used for the flower image earlier. First, we'll open the trace panel and click and drag to select the trace area. Because this is a simple shape without a lot of detail, you can see that the yellow trace area actually looks pretty good right from the start, unlike with the flowers where only small details were highlighted with yellow before we made adjustments. This image is clean enough that if we wanted to, we could actually make a cut file from it now. To do that, we'll first increase the threshold value. 
70% will give us a nice solid outline, so we don't need to bump it the whole way up to 100%. And then we'll click the trace button to trace the image. We need to use the regular trace option here as opposed to trace outer edge because we want to be sure that all of the interiors of the letters are set to cut since we're going to be using it as a cut file. And you can see when I drag the trace results off of the image that the cut lines are nice and solid. With a shape this delicate, cutting from vinyl would probably work best and give you the cleanest cut, but the shape is definitely cuttable. Okay, now that we know how to create a cut file from a simple PNG image, let's backtrack a little bit and make border cut lines for this image so we can make it a sticker or a paper embellishment that will cut well. I'll press Ctrl or Command plus Z a few times to get us back to before we trace the image, and then I'll bump the threshold value up to 100%, and click the Trace Outer Edge button since we won't be cutting any of the letter interiors for this. When I drag the image off of the trace result, you can see that just the outer border of the image traced, not the letter interiors, and that's exactly what we want. Next, I'll click to open the Offset panel from the right menu, and I'll click the Offset button. I'll change the offset distance down to 0.075 inches because I want the border to be a little closer to the image than the default distance. Now I can drag the original trace shape out of the offset shape and delete it since we won't be needing it anymore. And I'll click to select the offset shape, open the modify panel, and release the compound paths so we'll be able to delete out those little small areas that we don't want in the final border cut line area. Finally, I'll use the horizontal and vertical align options in the transform panel to line everything up, and I'll press Ctrl or Command plus G to group the border cut line and the image together as one element. Now that we've created the cut lines for all of our images, we're ready to print and cut. When I clicked the Send tab to get the process started, I realized that I had forgotten an important step. Do you see the red outlines on the I Love You heart image? Well, those aren't supposed to be there if I'm printing and cutting, just the heart border around the shape. I forgot to set the image elements to no cut, so if I were to print and cut this as is, all of those letters would cut out of the heart, which we don't want. So here's what you do if you find yourself in this situation. First, click the Design tab to go back to the Design view. Next, click to select one of the heart images, and then press Shift, then click to also select the second image. We need to ungroup these images, so we'll head up to the top menu and click the Object menu and then the Ungroup option from the dropdown. Now that the images are ungrouped, you'll see little boxes appear around all of the individual ungrouped elements. For the heart image with the white border, click and drag to select both the image and the border cut line. Then press shift and just click on the border cut line to deselect it. Now just the image elements are selected and you can press Ctrl or Command plus G to group those all together. For the second heart image, the approach is a little bit different because the border cut line is right up at the edge of that image, so it's not as easy to deselect just that if we click and drag to select everything. So instead, we'll click to select the interior part of one of the letters, and then we'll press Shift, then click to select all of the other parts of the image. Once we have just the image elements selected, click Ctrl or Command plus G to group those together, and now the image is grouped as a separate element from the border cut line. Now we'll click the Send tab again, and I'll click to select one of the heart images, then press Shift and click on the other so they're both selected, just the images. Next, I'll go into the right window under the Tool Options and click No Cut. So now just the heart border cut lines will cut. If I would have set things up correctly the first time, I would have grouped the image elements together from the start instead of grouping the cut lines and the image elements, and then I could have just set the images to No Cut when I clicked the Send tab the first time. Okay, now all of these images are ready to send to my printer, and after they're printed, I'll cut them with my Silhouette Cameo. I hope that you found this video to be helpful, and if you did, it would be great if you would give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll tune in again soon.